You're gonna have to put in some work if you want them good grades. I'm gonna just let y'all know that now. Hi guys, it's Nala. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to finally bring you guys my study video slash how I made things list my freshman year. I also want to thank Scrintel for being the sponsor of today's video and I will get into what Scrintel is and everything about it later on. But I do want to break this video up into about like three or four segments just so that you guys can reference through and I'll put chapters in this video so you guys can skip to whichever point you're interested mostly in. So first it's going to be how I take notes, how to plan your week slash your assignments that I do for that week. And then lastly I'll have my favorite study methods, what works for me. And I also want to reiterate in this video that everyone's study methods are different so these are just the ones that i use and just things that i've learned like along the way so starting with the equipment or like my tools that i use i start with my ipad and i got a lot of questions of like people who are starting college or going into college is their first year should i get an ipad or a macbook i personally have both but I feel like if you're a note taker who likes to actually write their notes and you don't want to do it on pencil and paper, it's easily accessible and you don't have to worry about losing your papers. So I personally write my notes on an iPad mini. I think this is the sixth generation and this is a perfect size for me. I didn't really want anything bigger than this. It's a little smaller than like your standard size notebook, but I feel like this is very comfortable for me. And then I obviously use it with the Apple Pencil. And I didn't originally get this for school, but I'm glad that I ended up getting it because it makes note taking super easy. And I use the app GoodNotes to take all of my notes. So it's a $30 one time fee for the app. And I've had it for three years now, I think. This allows you to basically write as many notes as you want. There are different paper options, like you have grid paper or regular like college ruled paper, blank paper, whatever works for you. I personally write all my notes in college rule because I just feel like it's standard. And the only time you'll see me typing notes on my MacBook is if my iPad is dead. Thank you Scrintle for partnering with me for today's video. Scrintle is a hybrid note taking and mind mapping whiteboard. You can use Scrintle for a multitude of things like note taking, vision boards, like I'm using mine, mind mapping, brainstorming, the list literally goes on. You can even use it for lists. I definitely categorize myself as a visual learner when note taking and just like my learning style in general. I'm always creating keys and assigning different highlighters or different highlight colors for definitions or like summarization or whatever whatever I need in my notes or you'll always see me creating some kind of diagram using images to kind of connect things in my notes to help me grasp the information and it also just makes it cute to look at I mean hello cute notes if my notes aren't cute am I really gonna look at them which is why I'm so happy to share Scrintle with you guys I'm really big on manifestation in all aspects of my life but especially academically and so I will be creating a academic vision board this year to help me strive for academic success creating vision boards is so easy and very fun with the help of Scrintle I'm gonna show you guys how I created my academic board and how you guys can create your own for this academic school year as my next semester and college approaches. I'm a sophomore now. I know, so crazy. I'm going to create an academic vision board to get me through this school year. I'm also going to use my vision board as motivation and inspiration to stay on top of my academic goals. And so can y'all, which is why I'm going to show you guys exactly how I made my vision board. I also love that Scrino has a sharing feature that allows you to share your boards with people. And you guys already know where I'm going with this. I would love to see y'all's boards. So be sure to share your boards with me. Start your own board today using my link that's in my description box. You guys can also feel free to use my code NylaNicole50 to get 50% off at Scrintle. And now I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a tour as well as a tutorial on how you guys can create your own board and letting you guys take a look at mine. Starting with my board, of course, it's all pink and super cute. I have my positive affirmations first. I wanted this to be the first thing that I saw when I opened up my board to give me some positive outlook. Next, I have prioritized. These are the things that I'm going to prioritize this year to ensure that I achieve my academic goals so getting rest when needed is super important as well as turning in my work on time if not on time early asking for help and assistance when I need it and studying of course Scrintle is also a really good way to study you can type your notes out on Scrintle next I have my fall semester goals and then lastly I just have some steps for success so as you can see Scrintle has a magnitude of different elements that you can add to your board you can add images links PDF files GIFs titles and so so much more so experimenting with Scrintle 
is so much fun and it's a visual learner's dream. So to start off the tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to add a text box. So super simple, we just hit the plus sign and I'm doing a kind of mock-up like another vision board just to give you guys an idea of how I made mine. You can even add emojis which is so so cute. And I decided to make this one blue since my other one was pink but you guys can see that they have a ton of different colors to choose from. And so since this is like the focal point of the vision board, I'm just adding some more of those affirmations underneath my text box. And it saves a lot of time if you just duplicate them, you can change the text and change the color a lot quicker than just making individual cards. So I did kind of like a blue and white theme and kind of made like a pattern with the affirmations. And you'll see me use the toggle tool to kind of pan around my board. And so now I'm adding a link because you can add links in here. And I just put in like a how to make straight A's, good grades kind of video that I found on YouTube. And I'm just going to put this underneath my affirmations just for something that I can look back on and refer to. Another feature is the columns. You can kind of make like a table. So this is another cool feature. You can honestly do whatever you want to do with these and just get really creative. Just like my other vision board, I just made this one for steps for academic success. Please excuse my misspelling. But yeah, I just have like little steps in here. You can even make like to-do lists out of these and just get super creative. It's super fun and easy to use Scrintle. As you can see, the options are endless using Scrintle and I recommend you guys to test it out. If you guys are interested in Scrintle, which I feel like you should be by now, I mean, why not? Make sure y'all use my link in my description box to access the Scrintle site. And don't forget to use my code and I the code 50 to get 50% off at Scrintle. Once again, thank you Scrintle for partnering with me for today's video. And let's go ahead and jump back into today's study vlog. As for my notes breakup, it's pretty simple and standard. I always find that it's very important to date the topics because if you go back like to the syllabus, you can see which topics you are going through on what dates and then it'll line up with your actual notes that you've written yourself. I also do a title and subtitle. Obviously titling your notes is important so you know what the notes are about. Then I'll do a subtitle and that'll basically have the chapter that we were reading for that specific topic. And then I'll also write if it's a lecture, personal notes, or textbook notes just so that I don't get confused because sometimes I'll write notes during lectures and then sometimes we'll have like textbook readings that we have to do and I'll write notes for those so I like to be able to differentiate between the two. What kind of note it is, the date, subtitle, regular title. Typically I will read in, in chunks or like in sections. I don't read the entire textbook chapter then write notes, I just write notes as I go. Pay attention to bolded words and if there are any like activities or videos to that specific topic then i'll write notes on that but i'm not writing notes on the entire chapter because then it's counterintuitive if you wanted to read the whole chapter then you can do that with the textbook you don't need to write down the entire chapter in your notes because then it's just not helpful write down things you maybe don't understand or things that stand out and then i always like to come up with some kind of color code key in this set of notes i have pink as like titles and then subheadings for like different subjects throughout the notes and then i have this yellow color for all like vocab words sometimes it can also be helpful to put the key at the top of your notes so that you know which highlight color is for which personally i'm a visual learner so i do like to implement diagrams and pictures or just anything that visually explains the information because looking back on it it makes more sense to me than just looking at a ton of words you'll see in my notes that they are very colorful because if they're not then i just can't look at them because they're boring it's a lot of color a lot of highlighting underlining implementing diagrams you'll see me numbering things and kind of making like steps for instance like for psych i've just listed out different conceptions of the working memory and put them in like steps that way it's easier for me to memorize them later subjects like psych that are very like textbook and information based and it's just a lot of vocab and just like things you have to memorize i just like to again highlight those vocab words in certain highlight colors so that i'm able to go back and make flash cards that correspond with whatever kind of vocab it is so like maybe these are just standard vocab words or maybe these are vocab words that have like other things to go with them kind of like the working memory so i do definition of working memory and then 
what are the conceptions of working memory and kind of make my flashcards that way and so that's all for like textbook based like sociology psych everything that's science and like math based i do the same thing but the notes are a little different because i always like to work out practice problems in my notes writing down step by step how to solve a problem obviously isn't going to be very helpful work out the problems within my notes so that i can look back know how to solve the problems and know what the problems look like and i find that this is especially helpful for if your final exam in a math or science class is cumulative because you can go back to your notes and see the title of whatever notes you were taking and then attach that to the practice problems that are within those notes so you're not just looking at a bunch of words and then having to relearn how to solve those problems you already have those practice problems for reference in your notes i think it's very important to do practice problems that are in the textbook first and then also just branch out into your own practice problems whether those be like on youtube whatever other learning site i do my practice problems on youtube and i use the organic chemistry tutor and another person i'll have both of their names on screen those are very beneficial for me and they help me just make sure that i'm actually retaining the information and learning to learn not just learning to get an a on the test because yes you can learn a topic and then just throw it away afterwards and not worry about it and then just go on to the next topic and then that becomes a cycle but then when it comes to the final exam you don't want to have to relearn those topics you should already kind of have a gist of how to do them so don't learn to just make an a learn to actually learn that way you can apply what you've already learned and what you already know to that cumulative test and it kind of chops down the amount of review that you have to do in my chemistry and math notes you'll see that i always write down practice problems and then i'll put questions beside them and i'll ask those questions either in class after class or attend like a tutor session and ask those questions now onto my favorite part because i have many things going on all the time whether it be school or like work stuff or like friends stuff family stuff whatever it may be i write everything in my notes i'm not a pencil and paper kind of girl and my phone is always in my hand so i just write everything i have to do in my phone i'm an advocate for planning out your week people organize differently so you may be the type of person who likes to write things in your google calendar apple calendar on an actual physical like to-do list like on pencil and paper or you might be like me and you like to write things in your notes and in college the workload is crazy five or six classes assignments due each week for those classes and little things in between like if you're involved in orgs if you have a job i will start by putting the date so monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and I will bold and italicize that date. I'll have it on the screen for reference. Each of my courses has like an acronym, so I'll just put that instead of writing out the entire course name. Beside the date and course, I'll just put what assignment to do. I'll do that for each course or everything that I have to do that entire week. And notes makes it very easy to make like a to-do list. You can use the checklist element within notes, and that allows you to actually check off each thing and not just have to like erase it. Color coordinate or bold, or italicize or just do something to make the day stand out so that you know what day something's actually due and you can also do that for the subject like maybe have each subject a different color by the time you've gotten into the groove of like writing down your assignments you can just glance and know orange is for chemistry or pink is for words and so i'll go directly to my dashboard my school uses canvas i know some people use blackboard i just focus on whichever week i'm currently in and then I'll just copy all of those assignments into my notes with the date, Monday through Friday, and then also the subject. That's how I plan out my assignments each week and make sure that I'm on top of everything. And this goes hand in hand with turning things on time. If you have it written down and you know when it's due, you have a better chance of turning it in on time than if you would just try to memorize which assignments that you had due that week and then just turning your assignments on time turn them in early if you know that you are getting that little itch to procrastinate just turn it in on time so you don't have to worry about it and doing stuff on time obviously gives you more time to do other things but it also gives you an edge to be able to study more and practice more because if you're taking up all your time to just learn the information then you don't have any time to practice and study which is really important for tests obviously it's just also a very good way to manage your time because college is literally all about time management don't try to take on so many credit hours because you're trying to be that girl you're trying to be that guy that has 18 credit hours 
don't do that if you know you don't have the time for that okay that's one and then two don't try to do too many assignments in a day and don't try to study all day long because you're not going to retain any of that information you're going to have to put in some work if you want them good grades i'm gonna just let y'all know that now there's no secret there's no trick or anything to getting good grades but just doing what you have to do and let me just say this it's going to always be another party don't ever put that party over your assignments okay it's going to be another one you're not missing nothing same people from last time was gonna be there you're not missing nothing so get rid of that FOMO now and so as for my personal study method bounce between two of them so the first one is to test yourself Quizlet makes it really easy to be able to do so I find like that's the most beneficial study method for me and then some professors will have like assessments or like pre-assessments for whatever topic I know my bio professor did this last year assessments that you could take prior to taking the test and so I would just keep taking it keep taking it until I got 100 but not just just memorizing which questions are right also just trying to actually retain the information and learn it okay and you can also make up questions yourself um you don't have to use quizlet but i just find that that's easier like i'm not finna write down questions and then write multiple choice answers when quizlet can do that for me you can also do it the old-fashioned way call up a friend ask them to test you read off your notes ask your questions and see if you know it my second study method that works for me the absolute most and i do this all the time any subject is to rewrite your notes and then fill in what you don't know with a different color and then study that what is the point of studying something that you already know yes you can review it but you need to focus on what you don't know study that and then review everything like as a whole and then the last one i don't really do this one a lot i did it a lot for my history class my fall semester freshman year but kind of like make a mock lecture like as if you're teaching the information that you're learning to somebody talk out loud and kind of pretend you're teaching it it can feel a little weird but i swear it's very beneficial because saying something out loud allows you to have a better chance of actually memorizing it which is why it's important to pay attention in those lectures make sure you're taking breaks because studying something for like three hours straight two hours straight four hours straight whatever it is can hurt you more than it'll benefit you it's better to study in breaks and in like increments than just cramming because cramming doesn't help study over the course of the week don't wait to thursday to study for that exam on friday you know what i mean like you have time so plan out your week work on that time management and study throughout the week most of my exams are like online when you get your grade you're able to see what you got incorrect too and so study that so go back to the exams and then write down what you got wrong so if you do have a cumulative test you know that you need to go over x y and z because you didn't get that right on the exam if you need more help get it like there's tutoring available at most campuses um i know my school has free tutoring so tutoring is available ask a friend someone that you know maybe who has taken that course and can help you ask your professor if they have office hours and just utilize all your resources because at the end of the day you're paying for this so you might as well and so those are all of my study tips i hope you guys learned something from this video these are all the tips and tricks that i use and allowed me to make themes list don't forget to check out scrinsel i have all the information about scrinsel listed in my description box so you guys should definitely check them out and don't forget to use my code nylonicole50 to get 50 percent off at scrinsel let me know down below if these tips were helpful for you guys i am in no way saying if you do all of this that you're going to make themes list but you will definitely score a little higher in your classes if you take the time to organize and utilize some of these study methods again this is just what i do i'm sure there are a ton of different study methods that people probably do that i didn't mention in this video but this is just what i do and what works for me so i hope y'all enjoyed and i'll see y'all in my next one bye y'all